Well, hello there. It is I, your main boy, Barry. So, I think it was a week or two ago, I finally uploaded something after a year, and I said that I was going to try something new, possibly podcast. I shot it out, um, you know, a few ideas. Well, this is my first try at this idea, a podcast. So welcome to episode one of the podcast. Hopefully uh, we get more than one episode. We'll figure out how that goes. Anyways, let's jump into it. So today is Wednesday, March 11th. Yesterday, Call of Duty Warzone dropped. Now we had kind of known that there was going to be a battle royale or something of that nature coming so with the last major patch that came out there was this new category in call of duty and it said classified on it immediately i thought it was a battleground didn't know what the name was things started leaking speculation started arising and people discovered that it was probably going to be called warzone going to be 150 players so all that came out to be true on monday the 9th Activision was like, hey, guess what? We're dropping Warzone tomorrow. And they released a a video. Um, The video showed that it was going to be trios only. As soon as I heard that it was going to be trios only, I was like, great, fantastic. Another Apex Legends. Why the hell would you have trios for the battle uh, for this Warzone? Trios only. I was like, why? I didn't get it. I was like, I probably won't play it that much because, like Apex, I don't like trios. I'd rather play solo. I'm a solo gamer. I do play with friends, but usually I play by myself. So, yesterday comes around, uh, like 11 o'clock local, click download, downloads in a few minutes. It was like 20 gigs, start to play it. Hop in the first round, no one's talking fantastic so i'm stuck with two people i don't know i have no way to communicate with them it was fantastic needless to say we died we died pretty fast um so i tried to queue for another one for some reason the queues yesterday were weird i don't know if it was because too many matches were happening at once or what but it is cross play so i don't think that there would be a uh a huge issue filling lobbies but we couldn't fill the lobby you need 150 players to start um i don't know if there's some sort of optimization that exists like if it's um multiples of three and close to 150 it'll just go ahead and start it after like a a given amount of time or something i'm not too sure about that Uh, but this lobby when i joined it the second lobby, it was at 90, 90 something. And I waited around. Luckily, you can get experience. Um, I mean, it looks like you, you can get experience. When you get kills, you get, you know, plus 100 and that kind of stuff. I don't know if any of that actually matters, but as, uh, as we're waiting, running around the map, by the way, this map is very big, it's huge. Uh, getting kills, trying to just find my way around. Finally gets down to like 50 people, and I'm like, I'm screw this, I'm not waiting around. So I left. And that was with the uh, the regular, the normal war zone mode. There's another mode called Plunder. Plunder, basically, uh, it's trios again, but the team with the most money wins. This time around... We're going, the the team leader, he marks a spot and we jump. And no one has, by this point, no one has said anything. And we're like, you know, four or five minutes into the round. No one said anything. And uh, you got to go around, you got to do various things, different contracts, uh, missions of the type, you know, go here, um, capture this, this uh, capture this flag, so to say. And then you're rewarded with money. Well, one of the people, he was off doing one of those camp. Um, one of the missions and he dies i'm like what the heck so i run over there 
and I go and revive him. He's like 200 yards away, so I'm like booking it, trying to get to him so he doesn't die. Because I didn't know about revives and that kind of stuff. So he, um, I revive him. He's like, thanks, bro. And I was like, oh, he does have a mic. So I'm trying to talk to him. And like, I'm not getting a response. I'm like, okay, that's weird. So we keep going. Uh, by this point, we have like quite a bit of money. And after watching the tutorial video, it was like, you know, uh, you can either drop the money off at a helipad and then uh, buy a balloon or just hold on to it. Now, you don't really want to hold on to it because uh, if you die, you drop your money, basically. I don't know if you drop all of it, but you do drop a lot. And you see in the middle of your screen, it'll say like, um, you know, minus $16,000. So we're going along and by this point, like it says, like you're number one, like you're the target or whatever, you're number one. And um, so I'm trying to communicate with them. And I finally realized that Call of Duty, which I mean, this has happened before and it just rung in my head that, oh shit, it's using whatever the default mic setting is on the computer. I can't change it in the game. I'm looking in the menu and I can't change it. Um, so I go to unplug my headset because I was using um, these right here and there's no mic. There's no mic on here. Um, by the way, these are the Hi-Fi Man HE4XX. A fantastic pair of cans right here. These are very good. I like them. Um, so I go and I try to change to my, my Sennheiser's my, what are these, like game game one or game zero? Uh, game one. So the Sennheiser game one, also a good pair of headset. Uh, these are a little tighter feeling. The Hi-Fi Man are um, a little bit more loose. But anyways, this one has a mic, drop down. The other one does not. So I went to go plug this in as I'm over here fucking with it, trying to get this shit plugged in. Um, <laughs> this dude fucking rushes me and my hands are not on the keyboard. So I can't um, fight back and I die. And then finally I, um, I get the mic, you know, switched over. And uh, the cords, they're both, they're plugged into my, uh, my, my Astro mix amp, which I use. Um, I prefer this mix amp because it gives me, uh, you know, I can decide how much game volume to voice volume I want. I, I know there's others like this, but there's a quick dial right here and I just, you know, mess with it. So if I'm playing and it's like really intense and I gotta like mute my team in Discord chat or whatever, so I can just uh, spin it over to game volume, which is fantastic. Or the other way around. Um, so I, I unplug the, uh, the Hi-Fi Man and I think I plug in the other one and I, I'm not hearing any audio. And I'm like, what the heck? So um, I go and I, I unplug the, the mix amp and I plug it back in and I'm like, shit, did the audio change to the speakers on the computer? Because I have like uh, four or five different audio devices that can be used. So I get it plugged back in and uh, it's not working still. I look down, I plug the Hi-Fi Mans back in to the mix amp instead of the uh, the Sennheisers. And I'm like, shit. So I go and I fix it, I flip down the mic, and I'm like, can you guys hear me? And they're like, yep. I'm like, good. Sorry about dying and losing the money, uh, but I had the wrong mic plugged in and I got it fixed now. Um, so anyways, we're going along. The game is going for, I really don't know how long. It feels like forever. So we're we're screwing around. Uh, we're between like first and like fourth. It just changes depending on who gets killed, uh, which of the other teams we kill. We realize that there's only a couple more teams left and we're number one. So we're in this fire station and uh, we're hanging out in the fire station with all this money. I have over a hundred thousand dollars in cash on me and I can't drop it off anywhere. So we're going, um, 
one of my other teammates, he's got like 80,000 and the other guy's got like 60,000 in cash. We can't get to the helipad. We can't uh, call a balloon because there's a like a, there's this little store box thing. You buy a balloon, it's like 30K to buy it. And we're like, we don't want to spend the money to buy this because right now we're in first. So we're just hanging out in this, the top floor of this fire station and we're waiting. There's like two, three minutes left on the clock and we're waiting and like two other teams are rushing us and they're trying to get to us. And uh, I go downstairs and I down one and then I kill him and then I shut the door and I realize like we could hear the other teams. So we're sitting up in the second floor of this fire station and on the second floor, there's, you know, the the fireman poles, you know, how there's like a pole and there's a hole in the floor. So I'm like, I bet we can fall down that. So we're waiting. And so this room is above the garage in the fire station. And we're sitting there, the clock is ticking and we hear them coming. They, they're coming in the building. So I'm like, shit. Let's fucking drop down this hole. Let's see if we can drop. And I drop and I'm like, dude, drop down the hole. And uh, he drops too. So it's me and another guy. And the third teammate, he's off. He's trying to go like drop the money that he has off so that hopefully we can secure some of it if, if everyone wipes. Because um, when you wipe, like if you die, you come back. As long as there's one person left, I'm assuming. So not all, not all of us died at the same time, luckily. Um, the two people that I was playing with, they're pretty good players. Uh, me, I'm, you know, mediocre. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not good, but I'm not bad. I'm not the bottom of the barrel, but I'm, you know, not shit hot either. So, um, he's going and he dies. Like there's other teams coming for us. And I believe it shows on the map, like where the number one team is. Uh, so he dies and there's this truck in the garage and the other dude that i'm with he jumps in the driver's seat and i run around the front of the truck and i try to get in the passenger seat because i figured you know sitting in the cab is probably more safe than sitting in the back and it's like this huge fucking we call them deuces in the military um i don't know what the real name is but they're old they're like older like huge trucks uh so we get in the back I hop in the back and I go prone in this deuce and he's driving and I'm like, dude, just drive. There's like 30 seconds left. And, um, we were going to try and go save this other guy. But I was like, I got, we got all this money on us. Just drive and hopefully we'll make it. Well, the teammate comes back. Uh, so when you revive, it's automatic and you, you just parachute back into the game. So he parachutes in and um, he's trying to go get his body. I think he dies again or something. But we're going. And I'm thinking we're like in first place or second. And uh, the dude like crashes into something. We're getting shot at. I'm sitting in the back of the truck with all this fucking money. And uh, we, we keep getting shot at. I'm like, go, 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 go. Like around the corner, go. And he crashes into something somehow. And... Uh, it was crazy. All of a sudden, like, the clock ticks down, and it was, like, fourth place. I'm like, fuck, fourth place? But, hey, that's pretty good. For the first round of Plunder, never played this before, I would say that's pretty good. Um, I don't know about you, but I was satisfied with fourth place. And I thought for a second, I was like, man, that's a lot of XP, because it kept racking up all this XP, I added it up and it was only like 28,000, which I mean, yeah, that's, uh, it's a lot, but on double XP weekends, I think you get way more than that. Anyways, I leveled like, um, one whole level at level 60 something. I haven't played too much of season two on Call of Duty. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. I will be getting back into it. Um, don't know if I'll live stream. Everybody and their mother live streams. So it's very hard to stand out. But 
I guess that's a good problem to have. Gaming industry is booming. So this uh, <laughs> this virus that's going around, the coronavirus, uh, COVID, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, people are losing their fucking minds over this shit. Stores are out of toilet paper, they're out of paper towels, hand sanitizer, antibacterial soap, like all this kind of stuff. People need to calm the fuck down. Just chill out. So looking at the symptoms, you don't know if you have a cold, allergies, the flu, this thing, or something else. Most people that get it will not die. They'll barely be affected. It'll just be like they have a cold. Um, those that do die, they gotta have some sort of um, pre-existing thing. Elderly, uh, very young, um, they already have like a heart disease or a lung disease, you know, they got like pneumonia or they also have the flu. So people who die from the flu will probably die from this thing. I'm not worried about it. My wife is freaking out, but I'm not worried about it. And the news is fear mongering people into buying all these supplies and stuff. Just fucking chill out. Luckily, my wife had bought a thing of hand sanitizer, you know, like uh, a month ago, just because she has a little, you know, like a little travel bottle of hand sanitizer that she keeps on her purse, and she bought it to fill that. Luckily, there's a whole thing, so I'm not worried about that. And we bought toilet paper and paper towels not too long ago from Sam's Club, but yeah, you go to Sam's Club, you can't find this stuff. You go to Walmart, you can't find this stuff. You go to Costco, yeah, it's not there. People are buying up cases of water like it's crazy. Uh, but meanwhile, gamers, hear me out. We have prepared for this. There's this little known game called The Division. And if you remember what started the, the things in The Division, something called the cash flu. Yes, the cash flu. And I saw a news article that said that coronavirus is now, there was a threat of it being spread by money. <laughs> and I kind of laughed. And uh, I sent the article to a friend and I was like, this reminds me, what does this remind you of? The division? And he's like, yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, people are losing their damn minds. So what, South by Southwest got canceled. Um, they're canceling all sorts of events, which I mean, it's kind of, good in a way so if um they stop having large public gatherings for a while it should decrease the spread of this because the, the bad thing is you don't know for like two weeks you could have it in you and not even know that you've got it because you're not going to show symptoms some people probably have had it and didn't even know and they're perfectly fine and they probably passed it on to someone else it's not like, um, you know, an, another, like a regular stomach virus, you know. Oh, as long as you have a fever, you are contagious like this. No, man, you're contagious beforehand. But the thing is, I probably wouldn't go visit my grandma that's old and has diabetes. Probably would not go visit her until this thing dies down. <clears throat> Do I have it? Most likely not. Um, but I don't want to run the chance of giving it to her. And um, people should probably not visit nursing homes and things like that where there's full of sick, dying people because, yeah, you're just going to speed up the process. Um, but, yeah, other than that, like, people need to stop worrying. So a couple hours ago, uh, they canceled E3, which, I mean, E3's been declining Sony didn't go last year. They weren't going this year. Not that Sony has a lot to show. Um, what, two years ago, they showed uh, God of War or something was their, their whole thing. I haven't played it. I've got it. It's, uh, it's over there. It's sealed in the case. I waited. I wasn't going to pay $60 for it, and I paid like 10 Yes. During Black Friday, I paid $10. 
So when I get a chance, I'll play that. Um, now that I have a whole lot more free time, I am working my way through games. I played Pillars of Eternity 1, and that game was fantastic. If you haven't played Pillars of Eternity, go play it. It is free on Game Pass, so if you have an Xbox and you have Game Pass, go play it. It's amazing. Me, I'm a story type guy, and it is full of story. Um, Pillars of Eternity 2, it might still be on sale today uh, for the, the three of you watching it. Um, watching this video, <laughs> I'd pick it up if I was you. It's good. What else did I finish? Mm, I think that's the only game I finished. I have a bad habit of starting games and not finishing them before I start another game. Oh, speaking of which, last week... Last week, um, Final Fantasy VII Remake demo came out. Now, <clears throat> I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. I love Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy VII was great. Uh, some of you might hate me for saying it's it's not the best Final Fantasy. I think, like, 14 is probably the best. Not the early 14, but, like, the current, more current 14 is very good. Final Fantasy VII, sure, it was, um the turning point you could say as far as graphics wise go is and uh, capabilities of what what square can do or could do at the time now square enix it was a, a vast turning point and it showed all these um cgi events pre-gener uh pre-rendered visuals and stuff and <clears throat> Told a good story, gameplay was excellent, uh, but I think that there there are better Final Fantasies out there. This it was good. Don't don't get mad. It was it was good. But so th anyways, this uh the remake. So I played through it. Great. Um, got all the way to the the boss in the remake. The I forget the damn dude's name. The scorpion thing. Anyways, um. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm fighting it with Barrett, and Barrett's like, uh, the game keeps telling me to heal. Okay, well, I'm trying to heal, but I don't have any power. Like, my ATB gauge is not full, so I can't use the fucking skill. And the issue is, there's this little, like, field generator thing in the middle of it, and you gotta target it, and I haven't quite figured out how to target things. So... I couldn't target it, and uh, Cloud died, so I'm switching over to Barrett, and I'm trying to heal, but I can't because Barrett's over there like a fucking idiot, just like shooting random things and not filling his ATB gauge properly, and then it was just a mess. I I hope they fix that, or maybe the other way. The um, I think there was another game mode called Classic. I'll have to fire back up and try and play through it on the, the classic mode, which I believe might be turn-based. Maybe that's easier. I don't know if you can switch from real-time to turn-based in the middle of things or what, but uh, a turn-based would be a lot easier for that battle. I don't know if that's a depiction of how the rest of the battles, like boss battles, are going to go, but if there's a way to switch, like you pause, pause the game, switch your type, to, from real time to uh, turn base for the boss fight and then go back to real time afterwards but you'd be able to select what you want to attack select the skill you want to use and it'd be so much easier to do it that way um yeah so anyways the last topic i wanted to talk about today on the first episode of the podcast, which doesn't have a name, is the fact that I got scammed by these motherfuckers at GamerOverstock.com. So, let me tell you a story. I'm going to pull the mic up close. So, 
around Black Friday, this Facebook ad comes up. It says, like, great deals on laptops, you know, severely discounted, gamer stock, uh, gameroverstock.com. So you click on the ad, takes you to the website, and um, I saw, like, a an, an Asus Zephyrus, and I was like, oh, sweet, you know. Um, and I was like, I've never heard of this website. How have I have never heard of this website? And uh, is it, like, new or something? So, like, I, I do a little Google... And I don't find anything, all right? There's nothing coming up about it. That should have been the first sign. Um, but it was a little bit of a warning. I was like, oh, okay. Um, I'm not going to buy this thing right now. So I, I forget about it. A couple months goes by. Here comes January, two months later. So I imagine uh, maybe this month or the month after, GamerOverstock.com will probably come back online. I imagine it was offline for a while. Um, while they can finish processing their scams, so to say. So here we are, January. And uh, this Facebook ad comes up again. And I'm like, okay, maybe it is legit. This time there's comments on there. And people are like, uh, saying, oh, yeah, I just got my laptop. It's so great. Uh, man, I should have waited. I bought the the Razer, and I should have waited for this Alienware. So the deal was, uh, there was two deals at the time that were, like, severely discounted. Others were, like, um, you know, moderate price, you know, maybe a couple hundred dollars off. Uh, but there was a, a Razer Blade 15 for, like, four or five hundred dollars. And then an Alienware 15R4 for $400. That's what the advertisement was for. Now, personally, I'd rather have the Razer, but I was like, eh, you know, the Alienware. Uh, I went ahead and I read through all the, the website's legal jargon. There's like um, a legal page and stuff like that. So I'm reading through all this. I go on Google again. I'm looking around. I don't see anything. I see a um, a Reddit post asking if it's legit or not. And someone in there, they're like, they're asking, you know, gameroverstock.com, is this legit? And another user on there was like, probably not, because the domain was just registered yesterday. I was like, just registered yesterday? That's um, weird, because I saw this website. Unless I'm having, like, freakish... Uh, deja vu, foresight, whatever. <clears throat> I can probably go look at my history and track down the day. It was right around uh, Black Friday-ish. But the website looked exactly the same as it did in November. And I was like, okay, so this domain name was registered yesterday, but I saw this in November. That seems really weird. And I go through, and I'm, I'm reading all the like the return policy and, and all sorts of stuff. And um, then I go over to PayPal because you can buy with PayPal on this website. And I read through all of their stuff and I'm like, okay, if this is a scam, I need to know that PayPal has my back. So I'm reading through it and it's like, um, it talks about PayPal's decision is the final decision on the determination of a scam or not. And uh, the different scam categories about, like, item wasn't sent or item was misrepresented and stuff. So um, I go back to the website, and I'm like, okay, it seems like PayPal has my back. And if PayPal doesn't have my back, then my bank probably has my back. And it's probably in the credit card's, you know, best interest to cover this kind of thing. And I was like, it's $400. If I lose $400, that really sucks, but it's not like 1000 or 4000 or something like that. So I was like, eh, $400, okay. I can live if I don't get this back. Um, so I go ahead and I pull the trigger. And then, you know, a couple days later, it was like processing order. And then it said order shipped. And I was like, huh. They really sent something. 
Oh, <laughs> one thing I forgot. Before I bought this item, and this should have been a dead giveaway, I commented on the um, on the post, and I was like, I saw this in November. I thought it was a scam. Hopefully, it's not really a scam, um, because there was other people commenting stuff, and you know, later on, it was like thirty minutes later. So after I, I commented that, and then. Um, I went ahead and I bought it. I was like four hundred dollars. Hopefully I don't lose it. If I do, that sucks. But it's not the end of the world. So I go and um, I go back to the ad, and my post is gone. Weird. And I was going to make a comment about I just bought it. Can't wait for it to arrive or something like that. And I can't make a comment. So these motherfuckers deleted my comment and banned me. And I was like, I just got fucked. I bet I got scammed. So, you know, a couple weeks goes by and I'm tracking this thing uh, through the mail. They sent it USPS. I'm tracking it. And... Um, The day of delivery, it's, it says it's out for delivery, and um, come home for lunch. And then uh, I'm like, you know, the post office, the mailman usually shows up in about 30 minutes or so, but I got to go back to work. So I drive down the street, and the, the mailman is down the street. And I go, and... Um, I stopped next to the car. I was like, hey, sorry to bother you, but I, I was hoping that you have a package for me. I give him my address, and he's like, uh, yeah, I think I do. So he goes, and he pulls out this uh, this package, this, this package, right? And uh, he's like, here you are. And I was like, huh, that's weird. He's like, is something wrong? And I was like... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just got scammed. And he's like, why do you say that? And I was like, well, this package doesn't look large enough to have a laptop in it. And he was like, nope, sure doesn't. And he's like, oh, man, that really sucks. And he's like, you know, I thought it was kind of weird, uh, this, this package. And I was like, why is that? He said, well... First of all, for the name, it says resident, and they spelt the name of the street wrong. I was like, what? They spelt the name of the street? And he gives it to me, and I look at it, and it says resident at, and it has my address, and they spelled the street wrong. And I was like, how the hell do you spell the street wrong and not know the name? It's on the fucking PayPal order. It's on the order for your website. How the hell do you get that wrong? Um, and I was like, okay. And um, so I get it. <clears throat> this is it right here. This, this document, <laughs> this document envelope, right? And I was like, shit. Hopefully it doesn't say like, you know, like I paid $400 for the chance to win a laptop and this is my consolation prize or something. So I'm like, fuck. So I go back and I read the page before I open this. I read the the advertisement page, not the advertisement, but the, the sale page for the item. And I, I'm reading all the fine print and stuff and I read through the legal stuff again and I was like, okay, it doesn't say anything about the opportunity to win something or to be shipped something or... You know you're gonna you're gonna buy this and then we'll provide you further instructions on payment on how to get the rest of the item and i was like i don't even care like through my process of buying this i was thinking okay this laptop is normally fifteen hundred dollars or more and it's four hundred dollars so either this is a scam or it fell off the back of a truck um and i'm okay with it falling it off the back of a truck sucks for the original owner but I'm kind of okay with that 
anyway, so I get this thing, and it says Wildlife Foundation from Miami, Florida. And I was like, Wildlife Foundation? I didn't buy anything from the Wildlife Foundation. And also, this postage is $7.75 for a priority mail. I paid an extra $20 for um, expedited shipping. (laughs) I don't see $20 plus worth of shipping content here. So I open it, right? And um, just as I thought, there there is a piece of paper inside. And I was like, oh, please don't let this be like um, a, you know fill this out and and send it back with your money order and uh, we'll, we'll mail the laptop to you or something stupid like that. So I get it. And it says, um, this is printed January 18th, 2020 at 3.47 a.m. for some reason. So these motherfuckers are scamming people working hard into the night. And uh, it says the Australian community. And I was like, what in the world? It says donate now to send aid to the Australian brush fires. And I was like, these motherfuckers scam me and are now trying to play on my heartstrings because at this time, <clears throat> around January 18th, um, the Australian brush fires, which had been going on for like 200 plus days, had now finally hit American news. Um, so there's like this whole thing and it was like, uh, the Australian community achieved status as a a 501c U.S. public charity in 2004, or 2014, in anticipation of natural disasters, blah, blah, blah. And so they want you to donate money. And I was like, donate money? I don't know what happened, but I have a feeling that perhaps this did come from the Wildlife Foundation in Miami, Florida. Seems like a weird thing to order. Why wouldn't they just be sent in like an email or something? And, uh, yeah. So anyways, the, the post, the postman, when he gave me the package, he's like, um, so I need you to go speak to this dude named John at the post office. And so when I I get, um, I'm like, all right, I'll go stop by the post office before I get to work. So I go in and speak to John, and I'm like, hey, I just got this. By this time, I didn't open it yet, so it was still closed. Um, so I go, and I, I have the package, and I'm like, hey, I was told to speak to you. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got scammed. And I was like, what should I do? And he's like, well, who'd you buy it through? Or who'd you pay it through? And I was like, PayPal. And he's like, okay. So the good thing is you'll probably get your money back? Probably. Um, and I was like, well, fantastic. Uh, he's like, there's not really anything I can do on our side. Um, but if you want to speak to, uh, like a supervisor for the district, then uh, you can. He gave me the phone number and I was like, oh, okay. Um, I didn't call this person. I was like, let me contact PayPal. So I try and go through PayPal's automated system and um, I'm like, I take pictures and stuff. I take a video of me opening this, and I screen captured the advertisement, and I printed the email uh, to PDF, like the order email and stuff. I printed that to PDF, and I was um, ready to send this stuff to PayPal. So I go through the phone, or I go through um, the website and the app, and I'm like, um, all right, how do I file this and make sure I don't get screwed? And I read through the thing, and uh, it was like, PayPal has, uh, will give the, the uh, perpetrator, I don't know how to say it, the, the right word for that. Um, I would be the claimant in this case, the seller. Okay, we'll go with the seller or the buyer. Um, so the buyer is saying there's something wrong with the order and you put like what happened or whatever. And there was like no, 
misrepresentation or whatever. It was like, do not, or did not receive order, like as in you didn't receive anything, and um, like wrong item shipped or incomplete order or whatever. So I'm like, all right, well, let me, I'll go with the incomplete because if I put, I didn't get anything, I mean, technically I did get something. Uh, so I go in there and I do it and I'm waiting for, I'm like trying to see if I need to upload something. Cause like, I got all this evidence, dude, I got evidence for days and, uh, it doesn't ask for any of it. So I call and I speak to someone and I'm like, Hey, um, so I just ordered this thing and it came in the mail and I got scammed and I filed a claim, but what do I need to do? And I give her the claim number and she looks it up and she's like, well, the seller has 14 days, I'm sorry, the seller has 10 days to respond. And um, after that, PayPal will make their determination. And I was like, okay. So I ordered a laptop and I got a piece of paper. What are the chances of PayPal not being on my side? And she's like, well, it depends on what the seller says. If they don't say anything, then you should automatically win. And I was like, well, what if they do say something? And she's like, well, then um, you should win no matter what, especially if you're saying you bought a laptop and you got a piece of paper. And I was like, yes. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure because it says like PayPal's decision is final. So I want to make sure that I don't lose out of this $400. And she's like, no, I completely understand. And I was um, saying, okay, so there's nothing I need to do. I don't need to send anything. Um, and she's like, no. If we have further questions, then we'll contact you. So 10 days go by and I get an email. And it's a refund from PayPal. So PayPal came through with the rescue. So that was good. But anyways, if you ever see these motherfuckers on Facebook or the internet, and it says gamer, or sorry, overstock, shit. It is gameroverstock.com. Now the tricky thing is, if you Google gamer space overstock, you will get overstock.com selling laptops and stuff. These are not the same people at all. Um, not even close. So just watch out in the future. Stay safe on the internet. And I will see you in the next episode.